I've gotten a few questions about my marketing cooperative program that helps bring you red hot buyers niche targeted that pay, stay, and refer. Hi, I'm Justin Hitt with Commercial Electrical Profits. So I was talking about my marketing cooperative program where I bring together seven to nine non-competing yet near, near proximity regional providers and we target a specific market such as affluent customers, small businesses, uh, sewage treatment plants, for example. And we not only influence the minds and and beliefs of those who are customers, but also build a public relations campaign so that when the customer takes action on what we're offering, the customer then looks very good. We amplify the, the social and the Uh, cognitive reinforcement of the buying decision. And now this is for big projects, but the marketing cooperative with seven to nine individuals, they each have a buy-in, gathers funds together to reduce their costs and reach out and find these customers in the fastest means possible. It also gives great partnership opportunities because these are geographically These contractors are geographically near each other, so if they end up getting a big job that one contractor can't handle, they can easily bring in a partner from the cooperative. The cooperative has a monthly cost that covers our mailings, our newsletter, our other aspects, and in some cases, we've positioned these cooperatives as a a nonprofit or an advocacy group. So I worked with a biodiesel council in Hampton Roads area where I was a part of a marketing cooperative that educated the members of the cooperative as well as lobbied and facilitate the use of biodiesel in that region. In fact, it brought on all kinds of contracts. Now, my role, I was actually selling fleet fuel and bulk fuel services for a distributor. But the model works the same, 7 to 9, 10 to 24, it just depends on the the resources you have available. But those individuals come together and essentially split the marketing costs, uh, and this way they can reach a larger region more completely. They target specific buyers, so the Biodiesel Council, for example, uh, targeted schools that had diesel buses. So if you're going to get a contract, do you want to get a contract with two trucks or do you want to get a contract with 35 buses? They also looked at the distribution and the uh, storage of the biodiesel, for example. Uh, It ended up being a several hundred million dollar uh, opportunity. There was another time when I worked with a government contractor and we did the same type of marketing cooperative where I whittled down a list of about 2 million active contracts down to about 1,200 individual decision makers. They were ideally suited for the cooperative. Now, this cooperative just had two people. And the reason I'm sharing the details of these cooperatives is because you can create one yourself. It's essentially a strategic marketing relationship where you partner with another organization, you split the costs on the marketing, you track the leads, you, you assign somebody to the business development side, and you essentially get customers for less. But I do this for this government contractor. I whittled it down to 1,200 prospects, and we made sure that those prospects couldn't go to a country club, to a meeting, to a bid, a bidding session, to a uh, an event without one of the partners in this marketing cooperative being there at the same time. And my sole role was to do what was called dog and pony shows, was to get decision makers in front of my principals, and my principals would take care of it from there. Now, we closed $7 million in work within the first uh, within the first 12 months, we had $7 million on the books. Within the first six months, we had an additional $1.8 million on the books. And by the end of the first 12 months, we have received that $1.8 million in new contracts. Now, the the effort in that particular marketing cooperative was all front-loaded. I spent six months full-time identifying target buyers, identifying the relationship between buyers, identifying which buyers had money and immediate needs, uh, doing introduction letters, doing a a customer survey, doing uh, prospect newsletters and other types of publications, making sure that my principals were recognized in the industry as experts at what they did. And in fact, many times the people on the prospect list sought out 
the partners in the marketing cooperative and started deals with them right away, deals we didn't even know existed. The key was is that because we pooled money together, each partner in the cooperative spends less money to get more customers. They're able to zero in and focus on real buyers in the marketplace. See, the biggest problem that many electrical contractors have is that they're either marketing their business or they're doing their business, and frankly, they much rather do the business than anything else. They'd rather be out there on a project, getting things installed, getting wires ran, getting things taken care of, than the day-to-day dog and pony shows and standing around at trade shows and events or, or talking to prospective customers on the phone. They're busy, and this is a solution. The marketing cooperative brings customers to you, and it brings together opportunity And here's something more important. I haven't met an electrical contractor yet that does a really good job on tracking their back end. Now, my specialty is the back office. See, when I do a marketing cooperative, I know how many mailings went out, how many uh, pay-per-clicks are we doing, what's the conversion rate, which marketing campaigns are doing better than the other, Uh, how many of these prospects have turned into opportunities where an estimate has been delivered. See, that's a big problem today. A lot of electrical contractors get out there and they'll look at a job, but they don't deliver anything formal saying, let's move forward. And then finally, I track out the invoicing. It's been a huge problem in some of these uh, cooperative arrangements, or you may even experience this yourself as an electrical contractor. The invoice doesn't go out fast enough, whether you're doing a deposit in advance with milestone payments or you're doing some kind of settlement at the end of the job. You're just not getting paid fast enough. So what I focus on as a business development professional in the marketing cooperative is managing all that overhead because it's the same amount of effort for seven contractors as it is for one contractor. But how many mailings have gone out? What campaigns convert? Which campaigns don't? How many estimates are out there? How many estimates have been followed up on and how many have not been followed up on? How many sales have closed and jobs have started and the cash flow? Is the cash flow working? See, that first project I told I, I told you about uh, with the a biodiesel cooperative, we knew how many gallons of biodiesel were going into the environment. Now, we had partnerships with refineries, we had partnerships with distributors, and we had partnerships with the actual users. See, the users weren't considered customers. They were actually partners in this whole thing because there was a larger environmental value to what we were doing. Now, in the relationship I, with the government contractor, where we whittled down this giant list of active contracts to about 1,200, I knew I started with a universe of 1,200 decision makers. Over time, that universe grew a little bit as we did discovery and research and you know people change positions. I track all of that. But we knew that if we sent out 1,200 letters, how many appointments did my principals get? And of those appointments, how many became sales or opportunities? Uh, in the government contracting world, you're going to do a sole source contract. You're going to Uh, You're going to attach to some existing active contract or or prime contract, or you're going to come in as a sub. So how many of those things came through? But I needed to know even if they just did a sole source with a purchasing card of under $25,000. That way we could track what's effective and what's not. See, a lot of times when you're doing high stakes deals, like right now we're looking at a conversion of sewage treatment plants into uh, – waste to energy plants. And in that, that's like a six to seven month startup process, but it's a three to $4 million contract. And now, now your piece could be a million, your piece could be 500,000. Uh, a lot of times they're going to have you come in and do an inspection and going to do some kind of maintenance work first just to check you out. But ultimately every piece of that puzzle must come together so that you know what works and what doesn't when it comes to your marketing. Now, of course, you can do this yourself. You can you can contact a peer. You met them at a trade show, and it's a peer in the next state over. You don't directly compete with each other. You don't have the, you know, your customers are not in their market, and their customers are not in your market, and you simply go in together to do your lead generation and to do your initial sales presentation. That means the uh, white papers or the, uh, pre- the presentation materials you might use to get somebody into an appointment where you're you're going to then create an estimate where they've made a commitment to have your guy go through and build out an estimate. 
It may be uh, uh, an active public relations campaign so that you can identify what new contracts are coming up so that you can get on the contract before the request for proposal. It might be identifying all the procurement managers for a specific type of business in a region because you want to develop relationships with those procurement managers. Well, can you see how powerful it might be if you pull your money together and you assign a marketing coordinator with their only role is to get out here and find the procurement managers and to get a letter in front of them and to to schedule an appointment. And next thing you know, you're in front of the right people in the right place and at the right time. Now, for high ticket sales, the right time is before they make a decision to look for a vendor. So that's going to be their vendor selection process. You want to be involved much longer and much earlier before that so you can cultivate a relationship to get the opportunity for what's called a sole source contract. I've worked with a number of clients and we've helped their customers break up million dollar jobs into small chunks that were done over time. So it was a a million and a half job. It was going to be a five phase project and they could stretch the phases over a two year period. So what was done for the client to make it more convenient to the client was rather than doing it as a million and a half dollar contract, which would require a lot of extra approval from their uh, management in the the city and and some of the state funding that was involved, they could actually do it in budget. This is a very important term. They could do the work in budget in phases and actually sole source it to my client. And my client was able to do that work without having to competitive bid it. Now, they do fair work and they do uh, have competitive pricing, but they delivered with the flexibility that allowed that customer to get additional work done. So that original million and a half job got done for about a million and a half. Uh, However, there was another half a million dollars in work that was done on the side because it was convenient to bring in this vendor. They essentially excluded their competitors in the marketplace. Now, this doesn't always work very clean. One client of mine picked up a $3 million contract and they were doing the work for the customer and uh, they, they won it by bid, competitive bid. They were not the lowest on the competitive bid. They ended up getting sued by the company that was the lowest and it was a frivolous suit. It was kind of a pain in the ass, uh, but ultimately the client did keep the work, uh, but it's, you know, it's not always clean and perfect because the one thing that you do have to be aware of is that when you do a marketing cooperative effective, you will dominate a marketplace. If you go after affluent customers in a tri-state area and you've got a marketing cooperative of five to seven individuals and you're advocating the reason why they should get this type of solution and you're connecting with both the consumer and their city government and you're connecting with other advocacy groups and you're doing public relations and you're doing direct response marketing, meaning you're contacting individuals directly. You're following them around on Facebook and social media and all these other platforms and their only logical decision is to buy from you over anybody else. Believe me, friends, your competitors will be confused, frustrated, and even angry in some cases because a marketing cooperative such as that will have more buying power. It will have more control in the marketplace. And in some cases, and I do warn you up front, it has to be implemented correctly because it could fall afoul of antitrust laws Uh, because essentially you've come together as a group to dominate a market and people get upset. And a lot of district attorneys and and senators and folks like that, uh, they don't understand how these things work and they ultimately will, you know, if the complaints get high enough, they'll get frustrated and they'll come after you. Uh, So one of the keys that I build into my marketing cooperatives is that we have a principal group. So the principal benefactor group, uh, which is the people who buy in and sponsor, they may have board positions on the marketing cooperative. Uh, And then we have a lot of subcontractor opportunities for others in the marketplace. So if you come in as the big dog, now maybe you're not the big dog today. Maybe you're a second player or a third player and you want to dominate your market and you start a marketing cooperative and it becomes successful and you start dominating the market. You start eating up every contract, everywhere your competitors turn, they see your people working on jobs that they wish they had. The way we reduce some of that frustration and some of the complaints is we actually will sub in our our competitors. And in many cases, you 
gain what is called a command and control position where you you own every job in that marketplace and you dominate every job in the marketplace, but we work on the, the humble nature of your attitude and we make sure that everybody in the market feels comfortable with you taking that dominant position. Now, this isn't some social justice warrior um, comfort level. In many cases, your competitors will shrink up and dry up, dry up and blow away because you've literally sucked up every bit of business possible in that market. Now, what this ultimately does for you is when the marketing cooperative is in place, is that you can you can pick and choose what customers you want to do business with. So I wanted to give you the spectrum that sometimes these marketing cooperatives come in, dominate a marketplace, eventually hand off and turn into a trade association or turn into an advocacy group, or sometimes they just dissolve after two or three years, depending on the objectives of the principals in the group. But outsiders to these groups have the same frustrations as you might have is that, oh my gosh, this is a good old boys network. I can't get in because I don't know anybody because you will literally have every contact in a marketplace and be developing relationships with them using public relations, direct response marketing, using social media, using uh, advocacy such as white papers or even uh, media presentations. You'll be positioned in the marketplace as an expert. And that doesn't always sit well with somebody who's confused about the true nature of business, which is to serve customers. The one thing I can guarantee with any marketing cooperative is that there will not be a customer in that region region who has a need that hasn't been addressed by the marketing cooperative or somebody in that marketplace. And ultimately, these types of private marketing cooperatives, they work like economic development groups, but these private marketing cooperatives can have greater reach, greater power, and better cost advantage in a marketplace and still remain competitive. There will be times where you'll find a contract, dredge it up, and they'll do an RFP and you won't get the job. Uh, However, that customer gets taken care of and that's the bigger value. Uh, Now, if you have got questions about establishing a marketing cooperative in your area, about setting up these types of strategic relationships among peers, non-competitive peers, uh, just simply contact us at www.commercialelectricalprofits.com and we will uh, – I'll be happy to answer any of the questions that you have. Uh, that's how I got the idea that I should be including this in a podcast. Um, most marketing cooperatives are 12-month programs. They usually have some kind of upfront buy-in and they're going to have some month-to-month costs. This is no different than – the uh, setup that's necessary to do a marketing campaign in your business. The biggest difference is, is that when you have five to seven partners in your marketing cooperative, you've now cut your cost it by, by five. You've essentially divided the cost up among the group and then ultimately can manage full-time individuals or your marketing cooperative manages itself with full-time individuals doing bookkeeping, doing administrative work, doing research, doing webmaster work. Uh, managing campaigns, and then instead of, and and here's an example, if there's a $39,000 buy-in and you've got seven partners, that's $273,000 working on your behalf. Now, this is ideal for larger contracts, okay? So the the $10,000 to $100,000 job is probably going to be incidental when you pick it up. You're really targeting the $100,000 and above contracts or jobs, multi-day, multi-week, and this allows you to focus on those jobs exclusively to get them taken care of and to get them done. It really does fill your pipeline of new business up and it offers you an ecosystem or a mastermind of like-minded individuals where you can talk about strategies, about what's working, what's not. Uh, One of the things I like to do in my marketing cooperatives is maintain a leaderboard because you really should know which of the partners are closing more deals than others. And then what kind of insights do they share so that you can close more deals? Because ultimately, uh, most marketing co-ops have a a 1% pay-in, which is a 1% gross of the job, goes back into the marketing cooperative. So everybody benefits from everybody winning. And again, you're you're geographically nearby, but you're non-competing. I've seen marketing cooperatives that ended up where partners bought out each other uh, because somebody was retiring and they basically sold their business to an, to somebody they've been working with for a year or two in the marketing cooperative. I've seen people uh, you know, group up on big jobs. Sometimes you do get uh, big fish jobs, uh, maybe a $20 million job that's uh, for a state 
or a federal government, such as a data center or something like that. Um, Sometimes you need to bring in the other partners because it's too big for you to do yourself. Or, for example, you can't bond it. Um, so the job's too big. You can't bond it. You bring in a partner who can bond it and you work as a sub. Those relationships get worked out uh, because when you have this flow of new customers, it's easy to make the deals to make the work happen. Long story short, I'm Justin Hit with Commercial Electrical Profits, and I wanted to answer the questions folks had about marketing cooperatives. And if you want to ask additional questions about marketing cooperatives, we actually have a complete program on the topic available at www.commercialelectricalprofits.com. Just click the contact page and uh, send a letter to my office and we or a fax to my office, and I'll be sure to answer your questions. Again, I'm here to help you create and keep pop- profitable customers and transform business relationships into profits guaranteed. Thanks for listening.